computer science, consulting, MBA, and starting up are the buzzwords that get us all geared up and bring a twinkle to our eyes. Could you imagine a life having all four of them on a single plate? Well, meet Megan Obansal, who's been living that life. Hi guys, I'm Bhavya Elnarayanan, a third year physics and electronics major at Bits Pilani, Goa campus. Today, we shall have a chat with Megana, a 2016 CS graduate from Bits Pilani, Pilani campus. She topped her grade at Bits and went on to work for BCG as a consultant and progressed to have an MBA from Harvard. Leaving behind the glitzy corporate career, she's now working on her startup idea at You Should. <music> Pilani is well known for its vibrance and diversity and ability to bring the best in people. So do you think Bits actually lived up to your ex- expectations? So yeah, of course. I think uh, what's, and I was in the Pilani campus. And what's uh, wonderful about the Pilani campus is, you know, we're isolated from the rest of the world. And uh, it, you know, over the like decades, people have worked really hard to create uh, a really good culture on campus. And that culture is not just like focused on academics, but it's also focused on, you know, your extracurriculars, uh, you know, um, creating groups and kind of um, engaging with fellow students. And I think that aspect uh, of bits, the very social nature, the culture on campus really does help bring out the best in people. And it's not just purely academic, but, you know, as an overall our all-round growth that you get in the four years. So I, I definitely feel like uh, it, it was a turning point in my growth and development before I stepped out into the professional world. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Right, okay. So yeah, tell us a bit more about your life at Bits. Like when did you get in? What was your thought process when you got in? And what exactly made you get into Bits and all that stuff, all that jazz so, the initial phase after J.E. Mail, the advance, that trauma and torture. So, uh, you know, like, of course, like most kids, I was also preparing for J.E. and my dad is from IIT Delhi. So I really wanted to get into IIT Delhi. Um, and, uh, you know, on the day of, it's sad, but on the day of the IIT J.E. exam, my nanu passed away. So I... I got very phased in the paper, didn't write like an hour of it or whatever. So I was a little upset about my J and I was considering giving it again. But meanwhile, uh, you know, the BITS exam went well and I got computer science. Um, uh, and so I was thinking about, and I got into some universities abroad as well. Um, so I was thinking about, you know, taking a drop year or joining BITS or going abroad. And, you know, all kids think like that, I think. Um, So, but my dad was of this opinion that, you know, I should do my undergrad in India because I've lived in India all my life and the cultural shock may be too much if I, you know, step outside. And he felt that, you know, being in the Indian college environment in a bit, so in IIT is very challenging for, you know, a student and, um, you know, he wanted me to live that. So uh, he actually one morning kind of during that decision period woke me up, said, you know, we're just going for breakfast, put me and my brother in the car. I slept off because it was very early and I woke up like two, three hours later and turned out that he was driving us from Delhi to Pilani. <laughs> and this was in the middle of summer. Uh, campus was already out and stuff. And like a few hours later, we actually ended up at Pits. Um, and then he started just like, you know, whoever he could find on campus, he would just go around and say, hey, this is my daughter. She just got into bits. She's going to take computer science. What do you think about it? And people over there seemed very excited about that. And I could see some like students who were staying back over the summer. They were cycling around and I I walked around campus and I could see myself living there, being happy, etc. So I took that decision that, you know, he may be right that I should stay back and, um, do my undergrad in India, I think it's maybe the right place. So that's how I kind of made the decision to uh, come. And um, when you first join campus on Pilani, uh, you know, from the first day, it's like, go, go, go. Uh, we have these things, it's called interactions, where all the seniors are quasi ragging you slash taking your introductions and trying to get to know you, but also judge you. It's a very uh, fun slash stressful environment they put you in but I think um, they engage you from like get go and there's never a day which is like boring because there's always something happening so I, 
I would never look back at that decision after I joined. So I think just that decision phase was one where I was not sure, but from the first day I landed on campus, I felt at home and, uh, you know, they were the best four years. So, yeah. That's nice. I mean, it's pretty exciting to just move off thinking it will pay for breakfast and you're suddenly there in the college of York, you know, where you'll be spending four years. So that's, that's, pretty, oh, that's a pretty interesting story, to be honest. So yeah, like moving on to the next set, uh, what were your, uh, what was like your life in college? Like how many clubs did you uh, like in, work with and what were your extracurricular activities? Did you take up any projects during those periods? So yeah. Um, I mean, of course, it's been a long time, but I was a part of some of the, you know, oratory clubs like the debating society, um, the dramatic society. Um, I played a little bit of volleyball. Actually, I injured myself in my third year in the volleyball court, got a hand fracture and could never play again after that. Um, and yeah, other than that, I was a part of a cultural department. It was, it's called DOT. And we used to organize some events in the Cultural Festival Oasis. So that's where I found, uh, you know, my uh, closest friends and spent a lot of my four years with them. Uh, and yeah, so I, those were kind of the, and apart from that, I think we, we all just would chill out a lot, uh, you know, all, all my weekdays and stuff. We would uh, also not do, like we weren't always busy, but also just <laughs> enjoying ourselves. Um, the you know way normal college kids do uh, and getting into all sorts of trouble so <laughs> nice that's nice to hear I mean that resonates with what we do in college right now as well so makes sense I guess now getting more into the you know serious stuff that we should be thinking about when we get into college sort of situation oh you got to be serious in college sort of uh, thing so, um, did you get any sort of idea, startup ideas in college? Did you uh, think of anything during the course of your four years at Bix? Uh, how did you get to that idea? If you did get to that idea? No, no, I was a, I was the opposite of a startup person in this. I was very, uh, I kept my head down. I worked on my grades. Um, and, uh, you know, I wanted to get like a job. I... Uh, I, I wanted to work in private equity. I don't know for what reason. I honestly don't know. But and then I saw a bunch of people's profiles and saw that they worked in consulting before they worked in private equity. So then I said I need to get into a consulting firm. And uh, so yeah, and um, so I was very like a straight laced kid, and I, I I wasn't actually thinking about starting up or doing anything like that while at college. There were some of my peers who were like actively thinking about starting up and it was a new thing back then there weren't that many I mean now I know that a lot of kids just start right up after college during college as well um, but it wasn't that big a thing back then but there were a couple of my classmates uh, who were doing that uh, and of course all of us used to think they're crazy uh, mm -hmm. back then and most most of us were very like um, straight shooters and i think i was in that bucket in college i didn't have any ideas or any, i didn't have any aspirations to start up in college itself how was your experience actually being a silver medalist is one of the best colleges if to say so in uh, india I, mean, I i don't know i mean it, it was good i guess um one of the things that i kind of decided when i came into bits because I couldn't get into my real dream college, at least back then is how I thought about it, is that, you know, even if I'm in bits, at least I'll be the best student at mm -hmm. bits, right? Uh, so that I can compete with the IITNs or whatever. Uh, so that was the reason why I used to focus. But I don't think it was that hard. Like, of course, um, bits had like a zero attendance policy and, you know, a lot of people did not, I mean, in computer science, there were people who would focus. Where most streams I know that people would chill out and so I, I think you just have to be consistent um you know go to class you just like absorb what the professor is saying and then you can get good grades I, I don't think anyone would disagree with me it does it is not a um you, know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to like do well you just have to be consistent and hardworking. Uh, so yeah that was my um and the motivation, like I said, was this that because I did not get into an IID and I felt like in life I have to compete with them, 
I felt that I should do my very best at least at bits and be, you know, one of the, uh, you know, I stopped my class and stuff like that. That makes complete sense. Um, okay, so moving on to more of your like career part of life. So you did mention you wanted to work with private equity, but uh, didn't you ever have an inclination to work towards tech? Because everybody in bits is working in some form of tech, at least. Like some of them want to do ML, some of them want to do ML. Uh, quantum computing, which is quite famous right now, and like it's it's pretty. Uh, uh, it might have been stressful for you to choose a uh, a management sort of a role when you are at in in a uh, tech role and you're learning in computer science. So, what made you uh, move towards BCG? Um, so, I think while I enjoyed the like theory and the algorithms and all those like aspects of computer science. When we started preparing for the job interviews, I realized that you know it's a lot more about like coding, and coding is also a lot more about. Um, I mean, or at least the large companies that came on my campus did not pitch it in the right way. And if you ask them about the projects that you were working on, it seemed to me like a lot of the tech was built, and it was a lot of, co- like I mean, at least for the initial years, a desk job, and I didn't know exactly what. Um, you know, I would be building as opposed to you know maybe um, maintaining things that were already built, uh, and maybe that's not true of some companies. But the ones that at least came and pitched on campus, it seemed like that. So that did not excite me as much. Um, and then um, I think uh, that versus you know the consulting side. I mean, I come from an entrepreneurial family, like my dad's a businessman, and everyone in my family runs a business. Uh, so the consulting side where they pitched about, you know, working with companies, learning about their businesses, helping solve business challenges, that seemed like a more exciting job at the moment. Um, and so I just did a like head on comparison of the two types of jobs um, without honestly thinking a, a lot about what the future would hold. And maybe, you know, if I may have started at the ground level in tech and would have built my way up and learned all the cool things that I wanted to learn. But at that moment, one job seemed more exciting than the other. Um, and of course, one thing at that, the back of my mind was like, I can come back into tech if I don't like it. But actually, that's a very wrong notion because once you don't like, when once you step away from it, it gets really difficult to like get back into it. Um, and I, of course, I didn't realize it then that, you know, setting myself up for a completely different trajectory as opposed to the one um, that I would have taken if I did personal tech. I, I got a job at Visa and again, and I don't like the bit system where, you know, once you get a job, you can't sit for any other job. So Visa was our day one company, the first one that came on campus and Microsoft and some of the other companies, which seemed that cooler were after Visa. I ended up getting a job at Visa and I wasn't actually even particularly excited about going and joining the visa um again for my own reasons like i don't know i didn't feel that excited by credit cards or something so <laughs> ultimately i just it was a more short-sighted decision based on the options at hand um and where i saw this consulting gig taking me was towards investing which also seemed like a very cool job on the outside um and so i i do feel like um a lot of the decisions you take as kids is based on perception and we didn't at least get enough information about what actually happens in these jobs or and um, that's one thing which i think the college should do more of uh, yeah. which is actually educating kids about like what each job entails uh, but on the outset one seemed better more fun than the others so that's that's how i took the decision that's nice. I mean, uh, consulting does seem like a very viable option to many of us if we end up not liking coding or, you know, not liking the initial uh, job that a company would offer. So that's a very uh, nice way to actually put it across. So uh, anyway, now moving away from bits. So how was your uh, work at PCG? Did you actually try, I mean, did it actually help you build your startup right now? So how was it there? No, actually, BCG I, was a pretty cool job because the project that I got placed on, uh, incidentally, was one where we were working with this like financial services client, and we were actually helping them launch and build some software products 
that were both client facing and internal. So it was a very uh, interesting middle place between business and tech. And I had like a team of 20 uh, people, which included developers, designers, and all those guys that were helping us build those software products. And I was working on the client side to understand like why we need to build that product and what's the end goal or outcome. So it was like a product manager slash role. Again, that board was not very uh, okay. prominent back then, uh, the product manager stuff. Uh, but I, I think that is what the job was. So I got to do that for about a year and it was actually a very interesting. Um, and they gave a lot of ownership at BCG. So for instance, for one of the products, uh, it was something that they had been building for three years, but it was not working and they had no clue why. So my uh, manager just said, hey, Meghna, this is your baby and you in three months you have to launch it. So you go figure it out however you want to do it. Um, and there I think the computer science muscle helped a lot because I could help the team diagnose issues really quick and run tests and figure out like why the logic wasn't working and how to like make it better or whatever. Um, and and so yeah so they gave a lot of ownership which i really enjoyed uh because uh, you know the outcome is clear to you and how how to get there is not clear to you so you have to problem solve your way to it so uh that was uh, pretty interesting uh when i did that at least then you moved on to volvo fine fine right so why exactly did you make that shift and what did it what did it do to build your uh, position right now you know there are like there there are only like so many career paths that one can take after consulting and like i said um investing was something that always intrigued me as to like how they do these deals and what actually goes on and how do you take a big picture call on a company whether it's worth investing in or not so those things seem very exciting to me and so that's why I, uh, you know, decided to pursue investing after BCG. And Warburg was a really cool job. Uh, I think I evaluated like some hundred plus tech companies while I was there across the stage, like from like Series B onwards to like late stage companies. Um, and um, we had a lean team. It was just like 15 odd people. Uh, so you got again, a lot of ownership and responsibility. Um, and the learning curve was like very steep because I didn't know anything about finance. I didn't know anything about Excel. Since in BCG, a lot of people who come from consulting actually understood Excel because they worked in projects like that. I worked on this like tech software product thing. So I actually didn't even know Excel. So when I first joined the job, I knew nothing. Um, so that was both scary and also uh, I think it uh, um, exciting because the learning curve was very steep when I was there. Um, so yeah, I think uh, overall, it really helped me understand why some tech companies do better than others, which ones make money and why, and which ones don't make money and why not. And think big picture, not just like when you're first starting up or something, you're just thinking about a problem statement that you don't really think that much about unit economics or whether this will be a profitable business, etc. But by the time you reach the growth stage, those things start matching a lot. So we met companies at that stage and it was easy to understand why they were motivated to start the company but then at that stage they were not making money and that's when things like would go down for them so it was an interesting process to learn that um and as it stands today uh, you know you can apply it or think about those things even before you start which is a very important thing to do because a lot of people come up with an idea which and I'm not saying it's not worth solving it, but it may not ultimately lead to a profitable business. Um, and, you know, then it's like difficult for you to sustain. And so those learnings really help me think through, you know, how would this actually eventually make money or not make money? And those skills I built while I was working at uh, Warburg. So uh, it, it was a great learning experience. Why exactly did you choose to go to Harvard after uh, all this? Did it somewhat uh, help you build on what work you did before and then get into, you know, something you wanted to learn there? Uh, again, when I was in college, I don't like to admit this, but it's true. Like he, all these things like seem very shiny things from the outside and everyone wants them and no one has a real clear justification as to why. And so they're all hindsight that people will be like, I went for this reason, I went for that reason. 
really people go there because you know it's an institution and being a part of that institution means something um and and for me as well like Harvard Business School was an institution that I wanted to just be a part of and there's no like clear logic as to why and you always back solve that logic um so I don't want to give you a sh like a shiny answer of why I went there for networking and for learning this and learning that I mean it's just you know the a peer set that you get over there and it's just an education that you get and the exposure and honestly it's not just about Harvard but any MBA school the biggest thing that you get as an Indian going there is like the exposure to how people from around the world think and how professional uh, contexts work differently in different countries and um, being in that environment is truly an education that you cannot get anywhere else. Um, and so for that reason, people should think about an MBA, uh, but only if it makes sense with their you know, career paths that they want to take. For a startup, of course, an MBA is not required. And in fact, it's detrimental because they make you very risk averse when you're in an MBA. They want you to go get a job. And um, for me, especially, I even interned at like a mega private equity fund over the summer. So for me, the hopes that their whole placement team had was I'll go get an investing job and they push you in that direction. So it's not really conducive to starting up or anything. But it's an institution that, you know, if you're a part of, there are things that you learn for like, uh, and these are not like things someone teaches you, but things that you learn about yourself and from being in a peer set of people that you've never been exposed to, especially like uh, if you're from an international country going there. That's, I think, something which is commendable of, about being uh, there. So in hindsight, why did I go there? Just cause. But what I learned is I think that, you know, aspect of uh, and the way people network there, the way people build relationships there is like very different uh, from how we do things in India. And I think those things really help me think differently and learn things that I would not have learned if I stayed back in India. So, OK, I'll, I'll come to the point. Um, what is you should and why did you decide to build it? So, uh, so at you should, what we're trying to do is we're, going to, uh, we're trying to democratize influencing or like social media monetization, essentially. And the idea was that, you know, as you, uh, the current convention in the market is that, you know, only if you're a scaled account on social media, would you get brand collaborations and the opportunity to actually make money out of your presence. But we actually ran a lot of experiments and the data showed that when you scale your audience, both the engagement drops as well as, you know, the trust and authenticity. So the CTAs that people would perform on something that you're promoting. So our experiments show that even three people with thousand followers could be get you the same result as one person with a million followers on social media in terms of the actual engagement, because someone with a small account has like 30 to 50 percent of their audience viewing them versus just one percent if you're a large account. And the CTAs are also 10 to 20 times better. And so rather than a brand spending like $20,000 paying to an influencer to make a post for them, if they incentivize their own consumers to generate content for them, that's a much cheaper value proposition for the brand. And for the consumer, it's an opportunity to like get into this uh, ability to monetize their social media presence without actually scaling their account or becoming full-time creators. So that's what we're trying to do through Yushad and it's a technology that will, uh, you know, will sell to a brand and empower them to kind of give these incentives to their own consumers. Um, and if their consumers post about them and create the right type of content for them, then they get some incentives based on, you know, how valuable that content is to the brand without any requirement for you as a consumer to build a relationship with the brand or their social media marketing team or anything like that and as a brand it's very difficult for you to find these like my pro nano influencers to do this for you so that's what you should is and we're very early like we're a few months old um and uh, you know we're excited about democratizing the you know uh social media marketing space that sounds great okay so we'll just wrap it up with one last question any tips for uh current Bixian like me, who are trying to, you know, look up from the crowd of people around. Yeah, I think uh, 
talk to as many people as possible like the opportunity set for you guys is much bigger it keeps growing every year compared to like when i was in college uh, there were a handful of companies in consulting or there were a handful of companies and uh, you know good companies in tech but now there's truly a great opportunity to like go work wherever you want do whatever you want people from which are writing content they are you know doing social media marketing their growth consultants for large scale tech firms they are working in, you know in tech building product for large companies and so people are just doing all sorts of things which didn't exist as job roles when i was graduating so i'm excited about the opportunities which you know you guys have um so i would say you should really explore talk to as many people as possible and find something that truly makes you passionate because the biggest differentiator i feel between people who are like successful and happy uh versus the others i mean you could be successful and unhappy you could be happy and unsuccessful but if you want to reach that quadrant of being both successful and happy i think the biggest thing i see in the people who do that is they are you know finding something that they're passionate about and then just going after it um and um if you are able to do that i think then you will find that magic balance of being able to be successful as well as being happy with the work that you do which is i think what everyone wants um and so i would say um talk to people ex- really explore push yourself as to like why you're doing what you're doing uh don't do things like me just because they look interesting or shiny do them because you genuinely find interest or passion in them and i think that's the key to you know building a great professional life and that uh, and a great personal life for yourself that sounds great major thank you for joining us on this first episode i hope you had a good time as well thank you so much for inviting me and it was great to chat with you best of luck for everything thank you thank you major